Good morning! Hello everyone. Hello and welcome to the New Games presentation presented in English. We just had the New Games presentation uh, presented in Spanish. Thank you very much. Uh, I am T from Hobby USA and I don't have any magical hands uh, to help me rearrange the games. So I hope you all are willing to bear with me this morning as I have to do my own hand uh, game swapping, etc, etc. But good morning, everyone. Welcome to this stream. We are streaming as part of Spiel Digital, a digital online convention that is happening this weekend, well, starting today and through this weekend, to uh, basically cover what would have been the physical Spiel convention in Essen, Germany. So, yeah, but the good news is, is because uh, the good news, the silver lining, because the physical show didn't happen in Essen this year, we have the digital show, which means that it can happen literally everywhere. So we have uh, all the Haba partners and offices are dialing in and uh, we're all able to come together and have a really truly international show with streams happening in multiple languages throughout the entire weekend. We also have demos and uh, different sales and things like that happening in all the, a lot of countries around the world um, in a lot of different uh, languages. So if you're interested in demoing some of these new releases, um, if the game is able to be played digitally, we have made digital implementations of these games and you can actually go and demo them on our Discord. You can also find out where you can purchase or pre-order some of these games. Um, so you can head on over to the Haba Discord. I just posted a link in the chat if you want. Uh, hang out there this weekend. We'll be posting about different streams. We'll be posting about different demos. Uh, lots of different fun events going on this whole weekend. And if you're interested, this channel will be family friendly the entire time. So if you want something to hang out and watch with the kids, there's play alongs happening where you can play with us. We have playthroughs where you can watch a game happening. Um, we have presentations, we have panels, lots and lots and lots of awesome stuff that's happening. You can find more information on the Hava Spiel Digital booth, which is... <laughs> The Hava Spiel Digital booth, which you can go to for free. Um, attending Spiel Digital is free this weekend. Um, so you can find more information for all of the awesome Hava things happening there. But this stream is about the new games that are releasing at Essen Spiel Digital. I guess it's it's not Essen Spiel, it's just Spiel Digital. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go through those because we have a lot. We have a whole stack <laughs> to go through and we're going to see if I can do it in my time limit. So here we go. Let's start off. We're going to start with the toddler games and work our way up in age. So first off, we have... Uh, so some of the covers are in German, some of the covers are in English. Also, you will probably note this is not a final copy of the box. This is what we call a white box sample. So this was made and shipped to me early before the production copies were made. So if you're wondering why they look a little maybe not final, that would be why. This is a sample here. But the components inside are pretty accurate to what they will be in the final version of the game. But this is Zalmal or count them up or count them up. <laughs> and this is a toddler game for two and up which is about counting. So in this game, we would work on numbers and quantities and taking turns. And you can talk a little bit about animals, that kind of stuff. If you're not familiar with the Haba Toddler games, in um, English, they're called the My Very First Game series. And they are specifically designed to help you work on skills with your toddlers and skills that aren't just gaming skills. They're skills that are relevant um, in a lot of ways. Uh, just fine motor skills, uh, language skills, numerical skills, lots of helpful skills for your little ones. And also they help teach gaming skills. So if you're raising a little gamer, these are great for getting your kiddos started. So, I can't, I have no magical hands to help me move games around, so I'm making a mess on my table, but that's okay. So, in this game, 
you are competing. This is a competitive toddler game. We have a lot of toddler games that are cooperative. We have a little tractor. Oh, backwards. We have the tractor driving around. Um, in this game, you are competing to be the first person to get all of your clovers fed to the animals. And so what will you'll do is on your turn, we have this nice big chunky wooden die and all of our toddler games we use um sustainably forested birch from germany and we use water soluble stain and so this stain it can't fleck off it can't chip it can't wear down and the wood because it's birch is like super hard and sturdy so you can't really damage it um same with the die we used recessed uh impress Im impression painting there's a better technical term but so lots of really good durable uh, um, items. And you'll notice the board was a puzzle board, which can be fun for kiddos. And it's a little bit more durable than foldable boards for young ones. So on your turn, you'll roll the die, big die. <laughs> the die will show an animal. So this is the chicken. It's a little hard to see with the camera and the lights. But this means that I would see how many chickens are there out in the field. How many chickens do we see? And I, you know, I would say, and I'd go, okay, well, there's two here, and there's one, two, three here. So if I counted the number of chickens total, I would have one, two, three, four, five chickens, which means I move the tractor five spaces, one, two, three, four, five. And because I landed on a space that does not have a clover, I do not get to feed an animal, but that's okay because I still worked on my numbers and now it would be the next player's turn. If a player rolls a clover, that means instead of counting an animal and moving the tractor, they just get to feed one of the animals. So they get to pick one of the animals and they go, oh, here you go, piggy, you can have this clover. And then the clover would be discarded and the piggy would be flipped over, right? And so now the numbers have changed uh, so that's how you, one way. Uh, the other way is if you roll a die and the number that you count up means that the tractor moves onto a space with the clover, that means the child or the player gets to feed an animal then as well. So because the tractor landed on the clover, I could say, oh, I'm going to feed the cows. So I'd feed the cows, you know, here you go, have a piece of clover. And then this tile would flip over. Oh, and now they're sheep. So as the game happens, as the game progresses, the number of animals will change out on the board, so you can work on different quantities. This is a great game for introducing uh, basic addition if you want, if your child is, is starting to get there. But it, otherwise, it's just great for teaching fine motor skills, counting, you can talk about quantities, you can talk about different kinds of, of animals, you can talk about how to take turns, you can practice rolling a die, lots of great stuff in this game for little ones. And remember, that is Salmo, or in English, it would be count them up or count them up, said kind of like an American cowboy, count them up. So yeah, so there's that game. And that is again, one of our toddler games. And so the next game we have is also a toddler game because we're working, we're gonna work up in age today. Dun, 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 dun. It's Rhino Hero Jr. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like really excited. I really like Zanmal. It's Zanmal is great. Count em up is great for numbers and quantities and teaching those kind of skills. But Rhino Hero Jr. is Rhino Hero Jr. <laughs> Uh, so this game is another toddler game. This is a toddler friendly version of uh, Rhino Hero. So it is uh, Rhino Hero is a, one of our more popular or well known toddler games and or sorry card games. Rhino Hero is a popular well known card game and this is a toddler basically friendly Rhino Hero world game and we have a nice big wooden Rhino Hero Jr. And we have a baby spider monkey. And in this game, we're gonna work on numbers too. And we can work on the idea of what is bigger. So there's lots of free play options in this game. One of which is when you first get the game, you can build the walls by matching the colors, right? So there's one step. 
and then I would say, okay, well, which does this work with? And you can work on counting. So there's a four, and then where's the four birds, right? There's four birds, there's four birds. So when you build it, we can see, oh, this is four. So there's some great little hints in this, on this art to help you teach numbers and quantities and work on like sizes. Um, it's a little hard to see with the camera, but you can see the one is bigger because it goes first when you're building the tower. And then we have the three, and then we have the four, and then we have, I'm gonna run out of spaces on camera, five and six. Pocato Hero asks, will they do another print run of Rhino Hero XL? And the answer is maybe. <laughs> so Rhino Hero XL, giant Rhino Hero, actually is a uh, Japanese made and licensed game. So it is made um, and licensed through Haba Japan in Japan. So it's available in Japan widely. You can just get it anytime in Japan. Um, but it's very, very big to ship to America, and there's some, like, stuff with that. So, the game is available if you're in Japan. We'll see, uh, about getting it more consistently to different parts of the world in the future. I'm not sure where you're located, so, yeah. But... So with Rhino Hero Jr., we have these nice towers. There's a few different ways to play, but these are the wall cards. And so one of the ways that you can play is you can make it a memory game. Another way that you can play is you work on just kind of discovering the counting. So you can lay these tiles face up, you can lay them face down. Um, if you lay them face down, you're doing a memory game and you're looking for them. If you lay them face up, you ask the kiddos, okay, what do we need to build first? Um, or maybe we, maybe you want to work on counting backwards from six. Maybe you want to work on counting forwards. There's lots of different ways to play, but you can put them all face up. Um, if they're just still working on learning their numbers and you can say, okay, well, what goes first? And they would say, oh, it's the one. And we have this nice matching. So you have the green, match the green. And then we have all the numbers out, right? And we would say, okay, what comes next? Well, there's some visual clues because we have two comes next. And if we were to line up the two with the one, we would see it's yellow and yellow. So we'd say, okay, well, what number comes next, right? And so they can work on counting all the way up to six. I don't have enough room on my table. Right? And then as they're working on counting, Rhino Hero and Baby Spider Monkey will come with them. And then once we have everything counted out in the roofs, we build the tower, right? So then they go and they can build the tower. And so they can work on their motor skills for building. And you can have a, a conversation about numbers and which one goes next you can continue that conversation you can talk about like the number of birds that you see on the tower there's lots of options for what you can do it's also just a fun stacking game and there's lots of move i'm stacking it so high it's gonna hit my camera soon <laughs> so yeah so this is rhino hero jr and it's designed by the same designers that brought us Rhino Hero and Rhino Hero Super Battle. So that's um, Steven Schrumpf and Scott Frisco. So if you like Rhino Hero and you wish there was one that was maybe a little bit more durable for younger players, I did it. I almost hit the camera. Do you see how close you are? <laughs> let's see here. Let's if I move it a little further. <laughs> You can see just how tall this is. Um, there we go. Ah, okay. Pokoto uh, Hero is in Japan. Uh, or no, you're in the U.S. So yes, it will. We're working on making it more readily available in the U.S. There we go. <laughs> so we can stack Rhino Hero Jr. and Spider Monkey. So yeah, so this is a game, it's coming soon, if not available in the country that you are in. You can find more information at the Haba booth um, um, for Spiel Essen. If you would like to see if this game is available 
for you to order in your country now. It will be coming to the U.S. in early 2021. I almost said 2020. Uh, it will be coming early next year. So if you're interested in Rhino Hero Jr., there's that. Normally you would take apart the walls to get it back in the box, and the walls are very sturdy, durable cardboard, so they're stable enough to do that. But I don't have time for that. We have lots of games to get through, so I am just throwing it all in the box. I will fix that later. That is a problem for future me. All right, next up, we're going up and we're going through the ages. Next up we have Up Auf die Ache. So this will be called Critter Cruise in English. This is obviously a German production copy. The English game will be called Critter Cruise. And in this game, all of the animals, oh, here's a picture of the English box. There we go. So in this game, all of the animals are going on a cruise, but it is starting to rain. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. uh, and we are trying to get all of the animals onto the boat with their suitcase before it gets so soggy that all the suitcases get wet. So what you'll do is you build your path. And we have all the animals and we build a little boat. So we put the put the boat back together. I love, I love, I just, how cool is that? We made a boat. How cool, look. And there's little portholes on the side for the animals. I absolutely, this one's so cute. So you make, you have Noah, who's got, Noah's got the rain gear on, and we have all the animals. And so we will put, all the animals, each animal is waiting very patiently in line for their luggage to be found so they can go oops, onto the cruise boat, onto the ark. And there we go. And we just put Noah next to one of them. It doesn't matter which one to start. And we have all their luggage. And so on your turn, this is a cooperative game for ages three and up. And it's you could play solo, so it's one to four players. But on your turn, you're going to decide if you want to look for the suitcase for the animal that Noah is standing next to. So in this case, the cow. Or do I want to move Noah one space to the left or the right? Or forward and backwards, depending on your perspective. So I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to look for the cow. Oh, that was lucky. <laughs> so I found the suitcase for the cow, I can tell because there's a little silhouette, which means the cow gets to go on the boat. So we put the cow's suitcase and the cow onto the boat. The cow is ready to travel. And now we move the last animal in line. We'll skip forward and now they're there. So now it would be a next player's turn. And maybe they, maybe they want to find the elephants. So they will move Noah a space to find the elephant's suitcase. And so they flip a tile. Oh no, it's the horse. So that's not the elephant suitcase. So we would flip this back over and everyone would remember this is the horse's luggage. So when we have a chance in the future, maybe we would move Noah to where the horse is so Noah can help the horse. Be the next player's turn. If someone, let me find what I'm looking for. I'm cheating. Okay. If someone were to flip over a suitcase that has water drops, that means that the, the suitcase is soaked. There is more rain happening. So we would flip over the last space on the path to the water side. And eventually, as we find on accident, we would flip this over. We have to remember this is water. But on a future turn, if somebody were to flip this over again, or another suitcase that had a water tile, we would keep flipping these over. And if it got to the point where all of these tiles from this side to here, we're all soaking wet, we would lose because all of the luggage by that point is soaked and it's all ruined and the cruise, the cruise is ruined. So we would lose. But if we managed to get all of the animals onto the boat or on, onto the ark before that happened, we would win. So that is Critter Cruise. Um, it's for ages three and up, and it will be, if not available in your country now, it will be available soon. Um, this is coming to the US, if you're interested in the US, um, in 2021. 
most all of these, yeah, all of these I believe are coming, yeah, everything we're presenting today is coming to the U.S. Um, in 2021 if it's coming to the U.S. So, yes, I will mention that when I bring up the okay. camera. So there is that. There again, that is what the English box will look like if you order it in English. So Critter Cruise. And this is, of course, the German box. So there we go. Alrighty. Next up, we have Pearl Party. So this is a German box. This is another sample box. So not the final box, obviously. The German name is Pillen Party. Uh, and so this is Pearl Party in the US, uh, in English. And this is designed by Thade Pratchett. Um, and in this game, it is a threading game. So I'm not gonna set up everything on this because there's a lot, but you have these um, oysters, clams, clams. I'm not good at seafood. So you have these clam shells and they normally sit and you fill them with these beads. And so I will do one as an example, but we have, um, it's a whole family of clams. So we have a baby clam and a sister clam and a brother clam and a mama clam and a dad clam. It's the whole clam clan. Um, but you would at the beginning of the game fill all of the clams with pearls so we would have we would have one in each of the spots for the baby clam we would have do 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 there we go I like that and then we would do that for all of them so I, I'm not gonna set up all of them because I don't have magical awesome assistants like Dave and Ilka and Bo. Um, well I do but they're in Germany and they needed a break. It's very late there. They need to eat dinner, have a relaxing time for a bit. Um, so that's okay. All right so we'll just set up these two. We'll set up baby clam and sister clam. Each player will also have a string and the goal of the game is to get the most pearls before the party and the party will start when the octopus is fully decorated so we have all of these um, ocean friends and they are in a bunch of different colors and so we put them out kind of everywhere where everyone can see them and on your turn you roll these pair of dice one is a color die and the other is an animal die but you roll both there are more animals in the box. I'm just not going to pull them all out. But you would roll both dice, and then you would try and find an animal friend that matches this combination. So I am looking for a sea turtle that is red, which I have found. So I would flip over this, the red sea turtle, and as a reward for finding the animal friend, I get to take all of the pearls from one pink spot in the current clam. So we are currently getting pearls from baby clam. So I would get one pearl and I would put it in my area while I'm working and then I would thread it onto my string and now I have it threaded, right? And then it would be the next player's turn and the goal of the game is to have the most pearls on your string at the end of the game when the party starts and the game will end when either all of the clams are empty or the octopus is fully decorated. So the way that the octopus is decorated is if on your turn you roll a die, so let's say I rolled this again, and you cannot find an animal friend that matches this combination, that means the octopus will get a pearl. So you take one pearl from the open clam and you give it to the octopus, right? And that is your whole turn and then it's the next player's turn. So as the game progresses, so let's say we all, we emptied baby clam, baby clam is done. Now we open Sister Clam. Sister Clam, if you succeed, let's say I rolled, let's say I rolled this. So an orange starfish. There is an orange starfish. I would flip over the orange starfish and I get to f empty all the pearls from one spot on Sister Clam. So I get two pearls this time, right? So as the game goes on, the more 
uh, the more pearls there are in each individual spot. So you will get more pearls uh, in a single turn as it goes. And remember the goal is to have the most pearls at the end. So you want that. You want to uh, find the animal friends later in the game. So there we go. So it's a very simple threading game. You can work on counting. You can work on rolling the dice, colors, combos, and it is competitive. So you are playing against each other in this game. And this will be Pearl Party in English. So there's that. If you'd like to find more information about Pearl and Patty uh, or the Pearl Party um, in your country, you can do so at the Hava Spiel Digital booth this weekend. There's a link in the chat. So there we go. I'm going to put it away like Eric Martin puts games away. <laughs> so there we go. So again, designed by Thade Pratchett. This is for ages two and up, two to four players, Pearl and Party. All right. Now let's go up again in age. It's hammer time. So this is Halvig in Deutsch, uh, but in English, this is Hammer Time, which I'm very excited about. I'm sorry. It's, I got, it's the best name ever. Uh, so in this game, we are gnomes and we are trying to mine gemstones, but there's a dragon living in the area that we are mining. So we have to be careful. We have to, we have to hit hard enough to get our gemstones, but not so hard we wake the dragon. So yes. There um, are two ways to play in this game, but it is competitive for ages five and up, and it's for two to four players. And it has a very interesting feature where you play with the box. So if we flip the box over, there is a special uh, mat that you put on the box the first time you play. You can take it off, but we recommend you leave it on. And you are going to take all of these shiny, shiny gemstones, and you're gonna put them, there we go, whoo, onto the back of the box and just random is fine, right, like that. And each player has a set of wagons. All these cards are mixed together. Each player has a set of four wagons that are looking for certain types of gemstones. So these are the wagons I'm trying to fill up. And so I shuffle them and I'm going to make a stack and just have it face up. So I am working towards this wagon, right? Then there are these um, special order cards. So these are just cards that the, the, local, the local gnomes want. They want specific things that don't have anything to do with these. These are extra. So we take these cards and we will put them someplace where everyone can see them and we put we put one face up, okay? And let's say I am playing with an invisible friend. I do have friends, they're just invisible, it's fine. So we'll say I'm playing with another player over there. So on my turn, I take the hammer <laughs> and it's hammer time. So I will hit the box and I get to hit the box as much as I want, as hard as I want, however, I have to stop hitting the box as soon as at least one gemstone falls off. So looking at the box, I want to try and get these gemstones. So I want two yellow and two blue. So I will look and I will say, okay, well, there's some yellow over here and some blue. So I think I want these gemstones. So I will use the hammer and I will tap. Oh, here we go. Let's see, I, I want, I, this red I don't, I don't really care for, but it's probably going to fall. So I want to hit it hard. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I'm going to hit it hard enough to, I need to move it back. I'm running into those cards, to get more than just the red gemstone. So we're going to tap, 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 tap. Okay, here we go. Here we go. That was uneventful. Well, I, I knocked one off. And it is a clear one, and the clear ones are wild. So that's actually not bad, not as good as if I hit those off. So I'm going to go ahead and say, mm, I'm going to put it there, and we can always rearrange that a little bit. So I'm going to put it there. And now it would be the green player's turn. The green player wants yellow and green. And there's a lot of yellow right there. 
Um, and there's some green over here. So I think the green player is just going to hit. Oh, technically, green player would have had to stop as soon as this red gemstone fell. So we'll just put those back. But they don't want red. So they will just put that back. And then it's my turn again. And I am going to hit. Woo! <laughs> Very hard. But I probably woke up the dragon when I did that. So whenever you knock off too many, if you knock off more than eight gemstones, you have to put them all back. You don't get anything. And you can check that. It's hard to see on camera, but there's a little picture of gnomes on the side and they have eight gemstones. So you can line up the gemstones along the side of the box. And if you have more than what the side of the box wants, you have to put them all back because you woke up the dragon and the dragon chased you off that turn. So when, let's say that I did not hit them so hard and I did better, let's say I did better. Let's say I got the gemstones I needed. I did it, I completed my cart. So we would put these back. I would score this and now I'm working on new gemstones. The first player to finish all of their carts will win. Uh, these ones, if on your turn you knock off gemstones that, that do what this deck wants, you earn this card as well. And this is a wild gemstone that you can use on a future turn. So for example, this one, we want to be able to have an even number of gemstones. So if I hit off an even number so that both of these gnomes get an equal amount, I get this card as a bonus. So that's what that is. But this is hammer time. Um, it will be available... Um, everywhere soon. Uh, in German, uh, the game name is Hauvig. Uh, and so there's that if you're looking for this in another part of the world. So you can look for either Hammer Time or Hauvig. And yeah, it'll be coming to the US for sure. Uh, if I can stop hitting the game enough, long enough to get it shipped. Um, but I believe this will be coming to the US sometime in 2021. Most likely whoop, in time for Origins or Gen Con. Hmm? But yeah, so <laughs> the game is for, again, two to four players, ages five and up. And it is a lot of fun. We will actually have a stream where we are meeting the designers of the game and they're going to talk to us about how they came up with the development process and we're gonna play a little bit as much as we can while we're all remote. Um, so tune into that later tonight. I believe that stream is in about four or five hours. We have lots of streams. Um, let me see. One, two, three, four. So that stream is in three hours you can tune in to watch more development, the development process for Hammer Time. But now we have Clever Keys. So this is a game for five and up, two to four players. And this game ho, ho, has some cool stuff going on. So I have to do a little bit of setup, but not a lot. Mostly we have to put the gemstones into the secret chamber. So, let me put the lid back on the secret chamber. That's it, we're done, set up. Oof, that was easy. <laughs> okay, so I've left this out because there are two of these and they are under this board. So what happens is on your turn, we are all friends. We're friends here, we're friends. We are all friends and we have we are exploring the old castle. And we have found in the old castle a room, it's a very strange room, that has a whole lot of key slots in the floor. And there are these, these giant wooden keys. And we figure out if we put the keys into the right slot in the floor, this giant treasure chamber in the beginning opens for a little while and we, can, we get to take the keys out. But there's a timer, yeah? And so we can only try three keys at a time. But every time we get a key right, it will leave the door open a little longer. So what you do is on your turn, they're very big keys. If, if, if this game was to scale, the key would be maybe half, half my height. Very big key, right? So on your turn, you're going to take the key. 
You pick which key you want. There's no difference right now. And you pick any row or any section of the, the floor and you try to put the key in. So let's see. I did it. So you can see I got the key all the way in. So that means I have succeeded in the first chamber. So th this will be open enough where if I wanted, I could get one gemstone out. But I think I can get more. So remember everyone, I have one gemstone. So now I'm going to try the next area. Now that I have started, I have to go clockwise. Otherwise the chamber will not work. So I'm now going to try here. <gasps> that one worked as well. That one worked as well. So I have unlocked two chambers. All right. I could stop if I wanted. I could get two gemstones or I could keep going for a third time to see if I get three. So I, I will do it. I'm going to try success. So I have to stop. We learned the magnet. If I go for a fourth, it will not work. Just cannot do it. So I will open the chamber and I get three gemstones. They're nice and big. The colors don't mean anything. They're just for fun. So I have earned three gemstones and now we close the chamber. And now it is the next player's turn. And the next player can move this key around or, but if they move this key, they must move in the next spaces or they can use a new key. So I'm going to use a new key and I can remember where the previous player went. So I will say, oh, I'm gonna start here. I did it, so that's one. Okay, but now I, I, I have to go here and I have to try it and I cannot obviously go where there is already a key. So I will try here, yes, it worked. So because there was already a key here and it was hard, I will earn one gemstone for every key in the section. So I will get two gemstones for just this section. So plus this one that I already earned, that's three. I'm up to three gemstones already and I've only done two areas. Do I go for a third area? Oof. I, I will push my luck. I will go for a third area. I'm gonna go wide. Oh no! Ah, so the key, it cannot go in. I could force it. We don't want to force it. Uh, the key won't go in. So I lose all the points that I had accrued. I don't get anything. Uh, and now on future turns, everyone will remember this space is the broken space. Or not broken, but it's locked. So the game will go on until uh, uh, the chamber is empty. Because I was not able to unlock my third my third attempt. We actually lose a gemstone. You put it into the corner of the box. So it, it um, takes off gemstones so the game will keep moving. And that is the game, that's Clever Keys. There's, um, but I wanted to show you, there's two of these boards and so you rotate them and so every time you play, you cannot, it's h very hard to memorize this across multiple games because there's so many different ways you could put this and then you could even flip it right? And then there's a second one that is different from this one. So if you have a, a family member that you play with who has a very, very good memory, like my niece Emma, whew, her memory is too good. You can make sure you always mix up what board you are playing with. See, it's down here. We can swap it. So you mix up what board you are playing with. So you would take this one out and put the other one in so that they cannot remember you know, they won't be able to remember between games. So that is Clever Keys, and that is available. You can find um, how to order that on the Haba booth page, but this will also be available in the US uh, in 2021. The German name is Inschutlet. Inschutlet. Uh, that one I have been struggling with. Laura has been helping me learn that one for a long time. Um, <laughs> So yeah, but this will be uh, available in the US in 2021 and it's available in Europe starting in uh, early November, uh, depending on where you are in Europe. Yeah, the closer you are to Germany, the sooner it is available because the games are manufactured in Germany and then sent from Germany. So the further away you are from Germany, the longer you have to wait. That's just how it is. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. 
We are now on to the family games. So Haba has a whole line of family games, if you did not know, like Miyabi and Honga and Cloak Cats. And they are, for ga they are games for the whole family. Um, so for adults to play with kids, not kids games that kids can play with adults. Uh, so first new release is we have another game in the Key series designed by Thomas Singh. So this game is for eight and up and you can play solo. So it is one to four players. And this is a mystery game, uh, a deduction game. And there's a whole series of games called The Key. And there are three different, uh, basically, themes or crimes that happened. And this is the third in the series to release in Europe. But this will be the first to release in the US. So this will be available early next year. And this is Sabotage at Lucky Llama Land. So this game, the three suspects have been arrested for attempting to sabotage the amusement park Lucky Llama Land. And we are all working as detectives and we, we have the suspects, they have been arrested. And we are building a case against them so that they can be, uh, they can be put, in, put behind bars. They can be tried for their crimes. So, this is my favorite game to set up. My nieces love this game to set it up. My nieces are the luckiest kids in the world because they get to play Haba games before many other kids in the world. Um, the, I tell them they get to play Haba games the first out of all the other kids in the US. Um, so they played this with me. They were addicted. So. You have nine keys in the game. You will take the key, you'll put it in the, member, the middle. You only pick one for every game. And the color key is the color like mystery or scenario that you're working on. So each player is gonna have a file. This is um, a collection of different evidence. Uh, you have your own briefcase. This is your work area with a marker. And then all of these cards represent different clues that the investigation team found. So we have lab reports, we have eyewitness statements, we have security camera footage, we have um, footprints in the mud, we have a lot of information. We have evidence from the suspects' homes, so much information, but we have to build a case out of these clues that is rock solid so that the, uh, the suspects can be put behind bars for trying to sabotage the rides at Lucky Llama Land. Luckily, no one got hurt, but we caught the sabotage, the sabotage in time. However, somebody could have been seriously hurt. So we wanna make sure the people are held accountable. So there's no turns in this game. In this game, you just go. So we would say, okay, ready, set, go. And everyone will grab one card at a time. And you, you wanna make sure you grab a card that has a color square on it that matches the key on the back. So I would say, oh, okay, I'm gonna look at this card because it has blue and I, it's an eyewitness statement that will tell me about a suspect and what tool a suspect was using. So I flip it over and I will look at the card and these cards are multilingual, so they're in German and English. So I know this suspect did not use the taser. So I know this, so I, I hold onto this card and I remember this clue and now I go and I find another clue so I say, okay, here's another clue. It's another eyewitness statement. And this one, ooh, a person, a 48-year-old person used either the knife or the pliers. A 48-year-old person used the knife or the pliers. So I would look at my file of information that we have from the case. Oh, and here I have more information about the suspects. So I can see, okay, I have their name, their age, their, their shoe print. Ah, okay, so we know Gonzo is 48 years old. I don't know if you can see that. Gonzo's 48 years old. Olivia is 54 and Jennifer is 22. So it definitely, definitely was Gonzo that either used the knife or the pliers. Hmm? So I have to remember that, right? I remember that. And as the game progresses and I gain more information, like maybe... Ah, here we go. Here's another clue. We know the knife was used before the pliers. Well, the crimes happened on three days. They happened on May 5th, May 6th, and May 8th. So I know the crimes happened on three days in a row. And if I know that the knife was used 
before the pliers, that means the pliers could not have been used first. Because if the pliers were used first, the knife could not be used before them. So I would cross off the pliers, and by the same logic, I know if the knife was used before the pliers, the knife could not be used on the last day. So I would mark off the knife here. Yeah? So, and as I gain more evidence like this, I can combine the clues to try and figure out who did wit who used what tool on which sabotaged amusement ride on which day. And once I think I have solved the mystery, I would grab the key. Everyone else would finish trying to, they would build their own case. Everyone keeps going because you might be the fastest, but just because you're the fastest does not mean that you would win. Because at the end of the game, I would generate a code, right? And I would find my code based on who I think did it. And I would put the key into the board. Let's say I think it's 415. And then I flip over the board. Oh no, the blue does not line up with the blue. That means I did not do it right. So even though I was the fastest, maybe I did not get the right answer. Hmm? So if somebody else had a different answer, they could try. If they did get it right, they would then add up how much investigation points they used, how much resources of the department did they use. And so you add up all the red numbers on all the cards you used, and whoever has the lowest number wins. Ichi feels, my dog Ichi, who just barked, she feels she has the lowest number, I think. But do you think you can solve this crime? Because you can try. We have a demo happening of Lucky Llama, uh, the key sabotage at Lucky Llama Land, happening about once every hour, all day at Spiel Digital. You can go and play for free with our demo staff this game, and you can try and solve the mystery of the blue key. You'll try and solve the blue mystery yourself on our Tabletopia implementation. Our demo staff will teach you and help highlight any clues or anything that, like that. So if you want to come play this, definitely go check it out. Um, it's a fun one. It's only available through the Spiel Haba booth. Let me send a link. Oh, and it looks like Sarah is running a demo of it soon. So if you want to go check it out, go check it out. You can get the link to the Discord where you can go and play with Sarah. Um, from there, if somebody, oh, I think I'm the only mod right now. Hang on. Discord. So you can go to the Discord and you can join a game with Sarah if you want to try and solve the mystery, or not solve the mystery, but prove who sabotaged what at Lucky Llama Land, you can do that today. Actually, all weekend. We'll be running demos of this game. So go check that out. If you're interested in the key series and you're in Europe, the other two key games are already out. I love putting this game away because you just shove it in the box. My niece is like that too. Um, so you can find more information about the key series, which is designed by Thomas Singh, who is the designer of The Crew. So if you're interested in playing more things by Thomas Singh, this game is super fun for adults. It is not just for kids, that is for sure. And more of the key uh, sabotage at Lucky Llama Land will be coming to the U.S. later in, or in 2021, early 2021. And we'll also be bringing over other key games as well. So the full key series will be available worldwide in 2021. So there we go. That's the key. Ages eight and up, two to four players. Oh, one to four players, because you can play solo. All right, we have one more game in five minutes. I don't know if it's going to happen, y'all because it's the biggest one we have. This is Dragon Draft. So Dragon Draft is designed by Benjamin Schwer, and this is for eight and up, two to four players. And this is a drafting game with dragons. So we have a very large board, which we put out. I'm not actually going to put it all out because it will not fit, but we have a board. And on the board, we have dragons. And we are putting on a festival. And so each of us has our own tent at the festival where we will present some cool dragon show. But we have to recruit 
our performers. And so what would happen is we would put out, I haven't even shuffled this deck. I've been playing this on Tabletopia, not in real life, because we also have a Tabletopia implementation and demo of this happening all weekend. So if you wanna go play this game, go check it out in the booth. Um, it's so funny, I've had a physical copy of this game, but I've been playing with all of my friends on the Tabletopia. We've been doing staff training so all the staff know how to play. So I haven't played my real life coffee, but I will, I will put out cards as randomly as I can with not shuffling them. <laughs> so you would have all of these dragons out and the dragons are different performers that you can recruit to come and be in your tent for an evening show. There are five shows, one every day over the course of the festival. Uh, and so we will record points for every show. And at the end of the five day festival, whoever has had the most spectators, which is the points, will win. So normally this board would be full, but there you go. Okay, so it's a drafting game. So on your turn, you will draft, you will recruit any dragon that you want that is out in the queue, starting here and going this way. So different dragons will earn you different points and they're different type of show dragons. So for example, this is the magician dragon. It is my favorite because it's not gonna focus, but there's a sheep. He makes a sheep appear. Uh, so if I wanted, I would recruit this dragon. Then the next player would go and maybe they recruit this goblin, which will help them build improvements for their tent, yeah? Then on my turn, I can take another dragon and I really want the magician dragons because if I have at least two magician dragons, I will get three points per. So I will skip these two dragons to get the magician, but when I skip a card, every card I skip will give me a thistle. So I have to add the thistles to my hand and that will hurt my hand limit because you have a hand limit of nine cards. So as soon as you hit nine cards, you're done drafting for the round and everybody else will keep going without you. But at the end of the round, let's say I drafted, let's say uh, during the game I picked up maybe these cards, the other player picked up other cards. At the end of the round, we will score our dragons based on what combination of dragons we have. There's different combos and different um, points that you will earn for earning different combinations. But before we score them, we will have the chance to build improvements to our tent. Like we can install a spa for our dragons to get pampered and look nice. We can install a perfume shop to make perfume out of those thistles. So the thistles will earn us points and not just take up our hands. So there's a lot of things that you can do to earn uh, points and build uh, better things. Like you can get your hand limit larger, things like that. In addition to building improvements to your tent that will earn you points during the shows, you can also build bleachers that will give you uh, points immediately. It's extra seating for your spectators. And so you will build them, they cost building points and you earn the goblins or you earn the spectators or points immediately. So it's a drafting game with a lot of interesting decisions in regards to how you pick up cards and how you hope your opponents pick up cards so that they make it where you can pick up cards without getting thistles. Uh, there's interesting strategy and in how you improve your tent. And you can explore everything that you can do in this game on our Tabletopia demos happening all weekend long at our booth, which you can get to there or you can hang out in the Discord where the demos are held there. So there we go. I hope you have a chance to go check it out. If you're interested, Hunter and Krohn, Hunter owns Krohn, will be doing a Dragon Draft playthrough in about two hours uh, or an hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half, they will be playing a playthrough of this game so you can go and watch them. It will be in German only though, unfortunately. So if you are looking for an English demo of this game, you'd have to go to our booth. Otherwise, you'd have to wait till Sunday. We have an English demo happening. Um, but 
The next stream that is coming up is Fiverfindin or Fufferfindin mit Emma. So Emma is going to be playing Fiverfindin. That was the wrong button. She's going to be playing Fiverfindin with you. So you can play along with Emma if you would like to play Fiverfindin. The board is in the chat now. So go ahead and print off the board if you would like to play with Emma. You can also just have a digital implementation if you'd like. Emma will be teaching you the game and how to play. Um, and Marcus, I believe, will be playing with her. And she will be playing, they will be playing in English and German. So if you speak German or English, you can play along. And if you speak any other languages, I'm sure you could probably figure it out. It's a pretty straightforward game. It's a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to see who wins in the game of Fiverr finding Emma versus Marcus. I think Emma's gonna Emma's gonna play every day this time for the whole spiel event. She's gonna play Fiverr finding. I feel like we should keep tally of Emma versus Haba because she's gonna be playing with a different Haba and play every day. So if you're interested in playing along or just watching Emma play, you can go ahead and stay tuned to this channel. She'll be live in a couple of minutes. Otherwise, I'm gonna go snag a snack. Uh, and then I will be back after Emma's stream to show you a quick demo of Hedgehog Haberdash before the Hunter and Crone Drag and Draft play along. Don't forget, if you'd like to come and demo Haba games, see the schedule, or see what else is ha happening in the land of Haba, head to our Discord channel or the Spiel Essen booth. Alrighty. I am going to go get more coffee and a snack. Have a good Spiel, and I'll see you all in about an hour. Bye! Yeah. <laughs>